Women's Hurling Burke Sport Podcast. A really exciting lineup again this week. So games have just been played the weekend. This is going out on Monday. We have a full review of all championship games played over the weekend. And we also have a preview of the, the forthcoming weekend's games. Again, I'd like to welcome back our regular analysts now, Sarah Donovan and Fiona Hickey, as well as Adrian O'Sullivan, obviously. Adrian, straight to you, where are we going to, st- where are we going to start? Like it's been a long week, Davey, a long week. A hectic week. Yeah, look, we, I suppose we had a bit of communication from Offaly, I suppose, off the record a little bit. So uh, some of the senior players were on to saying that it was definitely COVID-related, that they couldn't feel it. Um, so I suppose we have to give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, and look, once they've all quarantined, etc., we presume then in that case that they will have a team for the next round of the championship in two weeks' time. So, uh, look, we give them the benefit of the doubt. A few local journalists had told us that the word on the street around Offaly was that for the past two weeks that they wouldn't have been able to field the team anyway. But look, we'll err on the side of caution. As well as we had a few of the juniors on to us as well, uh, distancing themselves from the seniors pretty much, saying that they were their own squad. And uh, I think we... In fairness, they, they said they understood where we were coming from in that, obviously, if they only had 13 players available, there should have been people called up to the senior squad and not give a walkover. But we might have said, made a loose comment about that they were going to load the junior team with senior panellists and go down and beat the Shiloh de Clare, but that didn't happen. So uh, that's not what we meant by that at all. But anyways... Um, all the best to offer you for, for the rest of the season. <laughs> but look, let's not get caught up in negativity. Let's start um, with the story of the weekend, which is Westmead, who were junior in 2016, have now won, as Sarah predicted. And uh, they're, they're, And Davey. <laughs> <laughs> their very first championship match in senior. Fiona, you were watching it for us. What do you think? Yeah, uh, look, it, with me deserved the victory. I did say like I was really hoping for a limit victory, but like as I said, when we came up uh, in 2015 from winning the intermediate All Ireland, you're on the crest of a wave. You don't know what it's like to lose anymore, which is a, a novelty. And uh, Westmead just looked like a well-drilled team. They had been doing their work um, during COVID. Evidently, they looked strong. They were physical. They were fit. Their passes went to hand. Their fielding was unreal. Um, it was just, you know, they well, they really deserved the win. Now, and from another point of view, Limerick probably could have snatched the victory, but they were depending on the old reliables, like two of the best players on the pitch were Judah Mulcahy and Marion Quaid. Marion, who started in cornerback, Judith nearly got a goal from halfback, uh, just from a piercing run up through the field. I think... Um, uh, Limerick, despite their weakened panel, they actually could have got a victory, I feel, if they'd lined out a bit differently. So, But I, I think if they'd even got a draw out of that, it would have taken um, away from... It, it would have been a rob. Like, Westmead really deserved that win. They, they really they had scorers from uh, all angles, and it was just a very impressive uh, performance. No, you, you mentioned there Limerick had a weakened team, but I think it's only fair to point out that Westmead were actually weakened as well. And they were without five of the starters from their intermediate All Ireland winning team last year: Red McCormack, Sandra McGrath, Neve Horn, Michelle Murta, and Eve O'Malley. So, like, look, I was involved in hurling in Westmead. It's a very small pocket, a bit like mm. Kerry, North Kerry. They're pulling from three or four clubs. So, for Westmead to lose five of their starters and step up and win in seniors is a serious achievement. Yeah, in that sense, like you might say that like Westmead were just as weak as weak as Lim- as weakened as Limerick were. So, like, um, I think you, you told me that yesterday that about the players that were missing. I couldn't get over that. I was like, geez, Westmead obviously have everyone. They're all still back. You know, they're all back. They're ready for road. But when you said they were missing those five, like, it, it just shows that they're, they could be a formidable force in, um, in the senior championship. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be going back in them for the Olo Duffy. But, like, at the same time, uh, you know, they were very impressive. They're well drilled. They knew what they were about, you know. And that's why I think the big difference was Limerick did not know what they were about yesterday. There was evidently absolutely no game plan whatsoever and I can't say it any clearer than that. Yeah, I suppose a couple of interesting stats, Dave, you'll remember when we had the Grevels on one of the early shows, uh, Pamela Greville has now played at every level for Westmead from Junior B to Senior. When she started playing Junior B for Westmead, it was a one-day blitz and they lost to Monaghan with their first team. So talk about a career to go from there to senior. Now, Will O'Callaghan was tweeting that as well, but he obviously 
saw it on our Instagram page. So well, it's good to know you're listening and following. So give us a nice shout out there and off the ball when you have Sarah on again the next day. But um, that's, that's absolutely incredible. And I suppose to put it in context where Westmead have come from, we spoke to Johnny in 2016. Uh, we played them with Kilkenny's second team and beat them by 30 points in the Leinster Championship. And about three weeks later, Limerick's juniors ran them to three points in the, in the Ireland Junior Championship. And four years later, here we are, Kilkenny coming down the line next week, their first team going in on the back of a win. And they have every chance of getting to an, an Ireland quarterfinal. It's actually incredible where they've come from. It's just unbelievable. It really is. It's very, it's very inspirational and stuff. And to any weaker counties out there, I know Sarah is a big fan of the and very knowledgeable about the, the Nancy Murray Cup and all that. Like, I just think it's really inspirational stuff from them. And like, just more power to them. Like, you know, obviously it hurts a lot coming from a Limerick background. It really, I know some of the girls are hurting so much today. And like, I, I don't know. Like, I was getting texts from girls today who were finding it very, very difficult to get out of bed. And when you hear that. It just your your heart bleeds like for the girls who are putting it in and still wearing the green and white jersey, you know. But uh, not taking anything away from Westmead's victory, it fully deserved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, there is a bit of player unrest, I suppose, on on Twitter and stuff like that. But look, I think we should we should try and focus on yeah. on Westmead because it is look. There's nothing to take away from their victory. I suppose on on both sides, uh, Fiona, who are the early contenders for for All Star nominations for the the Burke Sports Women Hurling All Stars? Who impressed you yesterday on both sides? Um, I think like I really think that Judith and um, Marion, as I alluded to earlier, were just very, you know, they just showed so much class yesterday and they really um, dug the team out of holes um, when when they really needed them. Uh, Laura was, you know, the puck outs were very good from Laura. It was clear that there was no real, um, I'd say there was no real work had gone into Limerick puck outs. Um, whereas I think Westmead just, geez, you could pick on any of the girls there. That uh, Dowdle girl, what's her friend? Sarah Dowdle, was it? Megan. Uh, Megan, like, yeah. Megan Dowdle, absolutely unreal. And like Pam Greville, like, you know, as you said, after coming up from Junior B, Camogie, and just to perform so well yesterday. Um, I could pick on a number of Westmead players, to be honest. They were just very impressive and just played, I think they were just, a, they're a very even team. That's what I picked picked mm-hmm. out from them yesterday as opposed to Limerick I think Limerick were just weak in a few areas whereas their uh, their midfield were number eight and nine were everywhere yesterday for them do you know they were really I, I just again I'm just so impressed by them like and yeah well, you can say what you want about Limerick but you know we're not taking anything away from that Westmead performance they were well drilled they were they were exciting to watch actually yesterday which is which is brilliant to say about a Westmead Camogie side yeah, Megan Dowdle's father is 39, and this year he won two senior championships in Westmead. Harlan with Clankill football at Lawman's, both playing centre back. So oh she's from good stock. God. She's from good stock. So um, for a while. actually, he might be 37. Sorry, Paddy, if you're listening, I might have put two years in you there. He's either he's somewhere between 37 and 39. I'd say he's not sure himself, but he's still flying anyway. But um, yeah, look, it's great. Uh, that's great. Look. So we've Megan Dowdle and Pam Greville sticking their hands up early doors, Judith Mull and Marion Quaid. So, um, look, it'd be interesting to see. I suppose, Davey, we'll move on. Um, you were watching what for Kikini Forest on Saturday. What do you think? Yeah, again, I actually don't know where to start because the game, it was such a physical game. And at the, the first half seemed like whoever didn't have the ball was on top. And that's really unusual for, for a Camogie or a hurling game. And it, I suppose it started from the, the first throw in. The ball was thrown in, a bit of a ruck on the ground, and Anne Dalton came out with the ball. But it was Beck Hart and, and her tackling, her harrying, that dispossessed Anne, uh, and that just lay, led the whole Watford team and continued for the full half. Um, it, the, it was the first 10 seconds of the game that, that proved that Watford were in a right chance. Again, going into half time, it, it was level, but I suppose the way Kilkenny played, they just dragged everyone back. They had a two two player full forward line, and with their, I'd say they had eight or nine bodies from their own sixty five into their goals. And I suppose that's a, it's a real sign of, of Brian Dowling and Tommy Shefflin's tactics, or especially Tommy when he was with the WIT Ashburn team. He just crowded the fence, left space, left left space inside in the forwards to to, to, to try and isolate the inside line. I suppose Kilkenny they just didn't have. Enough no fan Dalton's because in, in the first half she, w- she was out or she was inside in the inside line trying to pick her out and in the second half they had to bring her out because to win more ball outside um, outside in the half and 
it's just a pity that she's not just left in a, in a specific position because as a player, I know like if you're getting moved from in, the, in the one game, not even in, in a couple of games, when you're getting moved around the pitch, it's so hard to set yourself and really be, the top, be a top, top player. But it just proves that, that Anne is that top player. Um, I suppose the way they were playing from Nice Gall was immense hookouts, catching ball. Again, catching ball at, at midfield, taking on her player, and there was space in behind the half-back line. Um, for, for Watford, especially in the first half, uh, Shona Curran was immense. Laura Murphy for Kenny, Lorraine Bray. Again, you expect these players, and these were, they're all reliable, reliable to come to, on top. Um, we didn't have six all at half time. Again, you wouldn't know who was going to win, but straight away in the second half, Kilkenny just showed their class, their experience. They powered on. Um, it was unfortunate. The very first puck, or very first ball in the second half, Kilkenny won a free. Denise scored it as she was doing all day. And then from the puck out, a short ball to cornerback and uh, the, the tackling to Harry in from the inside line of Kilkenny made her catch three times. And that was another score. And that was essentially game over. I don't think, I think, I don't think Watford scored for 35 minutes. They scored in the 23rd minute in the first half and didn't score until after the water break in the second half. And it was just that team effort from Kilkenny. Um, very hard to pick out two or three star players because it was such a team performance. And as I said at the start, it was when the team didn't have the ball, they actually were better than when they had the ball which is strange enough to say. Yeah, no, it, it, it was very uh, interesting. Like Dalton, I suppose, the, the, big, the big conversation in Kilkenny always is where, where do you play? Um, and Downey played her as a sweeper uh, one year like in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And then last year, she was back up in the forwards. Like, she is a magician. I can see the logic behind playing her as a sweeper, but if you get her on the ball, I, I think maybe playing her as a third midfielder and letting her sit in front of Megan Farrell might be the place to do it. And that she'd provide that layer of protection, but also um, would get on the ball and play that quarterback role and spread around. But um, absolutely class. So I went down to it, just I suppose to any excuse to go to water for a nice sunny day. Uh, very impressed, you say, with Anna Farrell and, uh, and Dalton. I thought they, they really kind of got a hold of the game around the middle of the field. Um, Waterford struggled, and I know like, we don't want to keep every game harping on about who's not here, who's not here, but I suppose. From the team that played in the quarter final last year, like they were missing Trish Jackman, who was just, a, I suppose, an iconic player, but a big physical presence for them. Uh, missing Anya Ling as well, and again, another physical presence, just a warrior that keeps going. And Cueva McGrath, the jewel player, it was just, again, physical presence. And I think they were blown away a small bit in that second half, they weren't they? Like you said, they were turned over trying to come out with puck outs, and they just couldn't, playing into the breeze, they tried to run it, and they just didn't have the physicality for it. No, most most definitely, and you're dead right. And then I suppose with with Watford's key players, I suppose Neve Rocket, um, Beth Carton, again, they just didn't have enough of them. As you were saying, they were missing too many. We said they, they can't, they can only play one position. Again, they were switching Beth from half forward line, gone into the full forward line, looking for a goal. And um, Neve started centre forward, came back right down, basically playing as a second centre back, and played very very well. She collected mm -hmm. a lot of ball, ran with a lot of ball, but just didn't have enough players around her for support. And again, with the Kilkenny team were, were very good as a team. They were tackling in twos and threes, which was immense. And again, just the physicality of the game alone, there was some massive, massive hits. Yeah, the shoulder. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, like, it, it's okay to give away one or two of them early on, but the timings of them weren't right. Like, um, can't, I, I can't remember, I think so, someone uh, showed Lydia Fitzpatrick on the 14 yard line mm -hmm. they had already conceded three or four scores in a row they needed to get the ball but that that caused a fifth score and mm -hmm. like killed the momentum for Waterford that they were trying to build mm -hmm. one interesting one I don't know like I feel very sorry for Katie Nolan in corner forward it's like mm -hmm. she, again first half kind of passed her by but the second half she had started great had a great score set up um, and Dalton for a goal chance um, that, that Waterford dispossessed came into the water break and she was flying in the second half and again corner forward your first one off <laughs> yeah it's yeah. Like, like a great time for Katie like I, I'd never seen her as a corner forward um, she played centre back on our intermediate team that won in 2016 and she played centre forward for Martins and is very effective 
Yeah. Um, but but not, I wouldn't see her as a corner forward, but she was going well, so it was a bit... No, they were winning comfortably as well, so look, it could have been tactical as well, I suppose. Yeah, no, they were well up at that stage, but yeah, I know you've been thinking about Lance yeah, and Ball in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not like... It's okay in the first half, again, first half performance maybe, yeah, the ball wasn't winter, but she was probably wasn't playing well. But second half, she started excellent. Kept mm-hmm. ball inside her. No ball went to come out easy. Won her ball. Set up. Tried to set up as, as best she could. Got it. Got in the score sheet. Um, but still, the first player off. Yeah. I, I just just, she's, she's from Oakley's, St. Martin's, which is where John Mulhall is from. So she has that touch of madness as well. But uh, class player. Look, so uh, I suppose a few all-star uh, selections. Look, I'm going to stick one down the sheet anyway. Because these are the kind of things that tend to go under the All Star radar. But I thought Davina Tobin did an absolute job on Beck Carton. Just followed her everywhere, didn't give her a sniff of it. A top marks, Kikini management got their match up right. Davina Tobin executed the role. I was like very, very impressed. She's the first one that'll go on the sheet for me anyway. Most definitely. And again, kept Beth awfully quiet. Another one that, that, that might have got the attention was Lauren Murphy, uh, wing forward, but she kind of played as a as a free kind of midfielder, hold of midfielder. Um, but she was on the amount of break, break and ball, won it, broke the tackle and either laid it off or got a free. Again, I thought she was, she was immense. But then you have the likes of Denise Gall and Dalton. Um, and on, on, I suppose on the, on the Watford side, you have to give credit to Shona Curran. Like she, she brought that fight, especially in the first half. Um, and again, Neve Rock, as, as I said, very good. She was she was very consistent. Uh, Corn brings a great physicality, doesn't she, to, to the game as well? Like just driving yes, around. Exactly. And I suppose looking back in the water performance, they went in six all at half time, but they had half goal chances in the first half. They had two, if not three of them, and then one one more in the second half. And again, up at this level, you have to be clinical. Once mm. you get a half a goal chance, it has to be taken. Or you again, as we've seen that that. Yeah, they kind of felt it around people like uh, I suppose Abby Flynn got a couple of them and she'd be a bit inexperienced at that level just the decision making like if they'd have fallen to bet or rocket or any fits you know you'd be, you'd be, you'd be pulling them out of, the, out of the back of the net but a um, couple of quick things ref watch uh, I think Andrew forgot about the new rules that either was hers being dropped left right and centre and they're managing for going nuts <laughs> over it yeah at least 10 times in the whole game <laughs> Players <laughs> dropped their hurley. That's <laughs> Yeah, the one thing was he gave one free for dropping the hurley, and that was um, Abby. Abby had a goal chance, and she Straight dropped the hurley to try to kick it, and he gave a free out. I, yeah. I, I was watching the match on the TV. I was going mad. If you're going, if you're not going to call it, leave it off completely. <laughs> Go call it free for the one time there was goal chance. But yeah, the line went. Like it was funny listening to because there was no crowd and you could hear the line and then especially on the line was calling for everything. Um, <laughs> Fergal, Fergal wasn't too far behind him with his antics no. as well. But the I boys, I'd love to see a GPS on the two boys. They must yeah. have covered nine or ten kilometers up and down the sideline. It was just That's, bananas. I don't know what did it go against Watford. Uh, to be honest, it's just like the players touch and everything looks so nervy. The boys were going bananas on the sideline for everything. I know they're trying to drive it on and everything, but I just thought, oh, Jesus, I don't know. But that's the thing, like. Pick your battles. You have to, mm. as a manager or even a player, you have to pick your battles that you want to win. Yeah. There was there at the end of the first half, uh, the Waterford got a score. There was supposed to be two minutes added on, and he blew it up in the thirty minute, mm. and then went mad. That's not a battle to win. You win no. the battle. The free. He's already blown. He's already blown for half time. A little one yeah. for any lads out there starting off. If you're playing, if you're coaching in a club game or anything, and you end up doing the line. First 50 51 Give it against your own team. And straight away, the, straight away, the ref is like, "Oh, okay." And then you can just fucking go to town for the rest of the game. It's fast. So there's a good. Uh, and you'd be surprised how like how up, like late in the year you can still be doing the lighting games in the morning. <laughs> Could be the county quarterfinal or semi finals, you know. So that's a that's a handy one. But no, that's great, Davy. Sarah, you were double jobbing for us a small bit. Um, you threw eyes over the Wexford Galway game first. I suppose we were all looking forward to this. Um, to see what Nick Galway would be in. Didn't have a brilliant league, um, but obviously the All-Ireland champions against, I suppose, a new look Wexford on paper. It was as strong as Wexford have looked in a number of years, like to Shelley Kyo and a few more of them that were back on the panel. So how did that play out today? I know it looks now like a 14-point loss for Wexford, right? So it ended 5-17-3-9. But 
I was actually really impressed with Wexford based on where they were last year. So they got within four points of Galway twice during the game today. And then Galway as champions obviously came back in and found a way to get goals. But I'll start with Wexford because I think that's the fairest way to start. My expectation of them was going to be very low against the All-Ireland champions and what they were obviously going to be able to deliver. But I thought Sarah O'Connor, Kira O'Connor, Laura Dempsey on her debut at cornerback, the goalkeeper, uh, Laura Brennan, like, you know, made a couple of mistakes, but then was very good under some high ball. Um, Jackie Quigley and Sarah Durbin had a belter. They were absolutely killing each other. And I think what happened early on was Galway went 2-4 ahead, so got two early goals, right? Catherine Finnerty, Finnerty and Ailish O'Reilly. Wexford panicked. They dropped Sarah O'Connor back as a sweeper. So they took, obviously, their power out of their uh, top six. And then you had Heather Cooney, Tara Kenny, Saber Durbin, em- Emma Hellebert, like Shona. Uh, basically, they had so much time and space on the ball that the likes of Jackie Wigley was on her own, right? Joanne Dillon. But you know what? They absolutely kept battling, really, really physical, and brought it back to four points. So after the water break, after the first 15 minutes, that's where Wexford kind of found their momentum and that's where they managed to tack on those couple of scores and I suppose in that period you notice that Neve Kilkenny wasn't that dominant. Neve was playing wing forward today, not midfield and I don't think it suited her because she wasn't in that free-flowing uh, uh, game that she normally likes to play. Aoife O'Donoghue who was quiet during that phase as well and I just think that that's when Wexford showed that they still very much have the basics and a couple of more games and they'll actually be a formidable unit because they do have the players across the field who like hurling and you know can play heads up hurling mm-hmm. um, uh, I late on in the second half there was there was four points in it again and, and Wexford needed a score and that's where Galway kind of kicked into gear so you had Neve Kilkenny going off and Tini Cormican going off right maybe 15 minutes left to play and you're going God Galway must feel very comfortable taking the girls off despite it being, you know, a five or six point game. And then you had obviously Orla McGrath, Eve McGrath and Rebecca Henley coming on. And when you're bringing in those players into your team, sure, like, that's I was like having, I was that's having like, a conversation with someone this morning. Would the Galway yeah. bench have beaten the team Limerick had out yesterday? The yeah, 11 of them, I mean, like, not... Yeah. not <laughs> and we were, we, we were giving them a, a cracking chance. We were going to play a 4-2-4 formation. <laughs> And they wouldn't even too far off it. Uh, I, I, I cannot explain like how... Their how pitch is incredible. Oh, my God. Yeah, but like, you know, Rebecca Henley comes on and she scores this absolute worldly of a point. Uh, and, and she's running about the field as if it's her debut. Like, she's so passionate mm-hmm. about it. Warlin McGraw was popping up everywhere. Neve McGraw was just steady. She was just holding the ship. She knew what positions to get into to cut off the supply to the expert attack. Uh, Siobhan McGrath, the sexy corner forward. Oh my God. <laughs> like every time the ball went into the corner. But again, Galway were so cute. Emma Helbert's looking up and she's given direct low ball that she likes. You know, uh, same kind of ball being given to Ailish O'Reilly. It's ball that they can win. They can turn their corner back. They keep them on the inside and they're gone. Like uh, th- that level. I, do you know what I'm really disappointed? That I, I haven't seen Cork and I'm after giving them my my shout for the All-Ireland. <laughs> Gusted! <laughs> because yeah. on the basis of, of, of the controlled manner in which Galway just pulled the strings today, like, yeah, they were under pressure. Yeah, they didn't like the physicality in some aspects of it, but they won by 14 points, taking off Neave Kilkenny. And mm. actually, Neave Hannafy was excellent at centre-forward as well, got a goal. But just so physical, but so in control of the situation. Like, yeah. you, you, it was a, it wasn't a faultless performance because any team that concedes three goals with that defence will ask questions of themselves. Sarah Durbin won't be happy to have conceded three goals. But you have to admire Wexford for, for what they what they brought to the game today and their physicality. Mm-hmm. And Sarah O'Connor's goal, if you get a chance to watch it back, superb. She runs from the 45, gives off a hand pass, keeps going, takes a 1-2, and then buries it net with three around her. Like, really, really good goal. So yeah, lots to fair. be positive about Wexford, yeah. Yeah, Galway, like I think when we had Angela Downey on here, she commented about how hungry Galway were in the in the Ireland last year. Um, like like Rebecca Henley plays like that the whole time, seen a bit of the Galway Championship this year, like she just 
from start to finish, you're just 100%, 100 miles an hour, glass, Hannafy the same. Like in the, I remember the 2019 Ashburn final, Hannafy had to be pulled away by the face guard by Sarah Friday, arguing with referee. She, like, she'd steamroll the corner back. We were 12 points up in injury time and was like losing the plot. Like, that's just what they bring to it. They're just animals. Yeah. Like, it's class. It's great. Um, the sense of pity, though, like, sh- sh- like, I, I, like, I cannot speak highly enough of them. The way, the way they win the ball, they're, they're like Ashley Cole at, at, at left, at left back with soccer. You know, like they're always looking to get up the field and actually contribute to the attack, which is so mm-hmm. rare in teams that I've been playing on because normally they think their job is done because they've boosted up the pitch. But like, <laughs> John Healy's looking yeah. to break, Heather Cooney's looking to break, and they're so neat the way they actually just zip in and out and, and, and get the overlap done really quickly. As a, as a defending forward, when you see a defender break and going towards your, your own goal, you're in trouble. Like you, you don't want to be going backwards to try and defend when, when you're supposed to be doing, doing scoring. And then if they get a couple of scores on top of that and your, your manager is looking at you, you're looking over on the sideline <laughs> and you're supposed to be doing the scoring, you're like, there's pressure coming on you as a forward. Of course there is. Uh, just, you mentioned Sean Healy there. Like I know you're on about sexy corner forwards, but Sean Healy is the most underrated player in the country. Like, if there's a transfer market, I love defending. Like, she'd be the first one on it. She's just class. Like, Kieran McGinney's old phrase, if you want to box, we'll box. If you want to play football, play football. That's Sean Healy. Like, if you want to hurl against her, she'll hurl you. If you want to flake her, she'll flake it. Whatever you want. She's class. Class she was, so, she was so good today, so neat today. But, but just collectively as a unit, they, they really knew. Um, they, they know each other inside out. And, and that's what we're talking about. People ask why there's such a differentiation between the Kilkenny, Corks and Galways against the Limericks, the Wexfords, the Waterfords. It's time. It's knowing each other. It's understanding each other. And it's getting to play with each other for, for a period of three or four years. And that's what builds the team. And, and you can't, can't buy that. You know, that, that's, not a, that's not a transfer market job. No. Um, I suppose from, from both sides then, Sarah, who, who are the early <laughs> contenders to, uh, for an old spot in the All-Star team? Okay, well, really like Siobhan McGrath, as I said today, um, Aoife O'Donoghue was, you know, exceptional. I think she scored 1-2. Um, I suppose busier than Eve Kilkenny today. Uh, Carrie Dolan scored nine points. Uh, very, very good from place balls. Um, uh, Rebecca Henley, I like, it, it's funny because even though she was a sub, she was just so aggressive when she came on. You know that there's going to be a starting place there for her. There has to be. Emma Hellebrecht, like, heads up hurling. You'd pick at least six or seven from Galway who put their hands up immediately in a game that was swinging back and forth. Mm-hmm. From Wexford's point of view, Laura Dempsey in cornerback. Uh, I, I think she'll give the girls a run for her money. I, I just think an unknown entity until today, and she performed so well. When you consider who she had to mark today and, and the busyness of that Galway, you know, uh, full forward line, Laura definitely came out with more balls than went in. So, you know, happy with her for that. Um, Kira O'Connor, Sarah O'Connor, uh, Jackie Quigley for, for the fight that she showed. I suppose Jackie does some things really well. I've marked her a couple of times. She's great to win an aerial ball. It's just today she was up so far because she was coming out at half forward. She's in a full forward. That finish that the likes of Coyle Devan has because they're used to being around the square. Jackie doesn't have that yet. But, you know, in terms of aerial ability and winning a ball off Sarah Durbin, no better woman to go in and do it. So... Yeah, I, so it's, it's an interesting point you make there about Rebecca Henley. You say she has to get a starting position, but yeah. like the way GA is gone, that's not necessarily the case. So she could get that Maura Shanahan role of, of being unleashed and making a huge impact to 20 minutes to go. It's an awful job to get. It, is, it depends on what culture you create in the team. It depends. Uh, no, it's a not. Like sorry, it. sorry. <laughs> no. Ted McManaman's the same. Like, no, I appreciate yeah. he's an incredible footballer, but if you ask Kevin, did you want to start? Every time. Yeah, Every I don't time. Know. I think it depends on what culture you... <laughs> if my leg was hanging off, <laughs> I'd consider it. You know, no. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. I think like there's something in class. If you have a, a panel of 19 or 20, like when, when you're able to bring on players of that quality and they know they're going in to finish the job and get you over the line, I think if you create the right culture, that can be a huge weapon for you. You're talking it's, about culture, but I think... Lads are being selfish and just want to play and... <laughs> No, 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 no. I think I really have to listen says a Claire on Instagram. No. <laughs> Three players here, Sully. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I actually think that it's, it's I'm with you. Hey, there now. was no fear you ever coming out as an impact, so Vicky. <laughs> 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 I, I'm going to make that <laughs> feel like too enthusiastic. <laughs> you might, have, you might have looked after a few people that thought they were coming in as an impact, so <laughs> I don't think there's any fear of doing it the other way around. <laughs> I, 
I, I genuinely agree in one sense in what you're saying, but I don't think you mean culture. I think you mean a manager who says to players outright, you're either coming on today or you're not. I don't yeah. think you, as a social That's culture, though. That's communication. Side side, oh, well, that's, that's communication. That's not culture. Because I think, I think managers have a massive responsibility. If Dave's on the sideline and he's expecting to come in and the manager says to him, I'm going to give you 20 minutes today, then Dave's going, grand, I'm getting 20 minutes. But if he says, I don't know when I'm bringing you in, but you will come in, and then he bring, gives him four minutes at the end, that's yeah. carry on. Like, that's not an impact zone. That's just giving plan, land another five plan. minutes to keep him quiet. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, if, if you want the likes of Rebecca Henley to be happy, then she has to know when she's coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I think look, it's, a good, it's, a good, uh, it's a good pla- It's a good problem to have, isn't it? I agree. I like your bed, their bench is so strong, and I think that could be the difference in an All Ireland champion this year in Camogie, in any sport really, but in Camogie especially. If you have a bench, looking at Limerick yesterday, not you know there was no senior, there was one senior, one girl who had experienced at senior level on the bench, and you look as you said at Galway's bench yesterday, it was sick. Yeah, yeah, the, like the best teams you see, like even like if you go back to the last few All Ireland hurling winners, like. So when Galway were bringing on lads, and Limerick were bringing on lads, and Tip were bringing on lads, they're bringing on class players. So like it really is the difference. You know, if you're playing cornerback there, centre back, and you've had a tough fifty minutes, fifty five minutes, and you see some lad coming on raring to go, and it's as good as a lad that's gone off. Like it's it's something that could definitely change the game. But um, we're talk, talking about impact and first impact. Sarah, you were watching Tip Clare for us a little bit as well today. Where did they pull Ashley Maloney out of? Unbelievable. <laughs> I actually saw a tweet from Stephen Gleeson during the week saying, you know, welcome Ashley Maloney to the, to the senior ladies football park, Camogie setup. And I didn't know whether it was an April Fool in October. Like, I, I just hadn't heard of it, anticipated it, I suppose, because Care played junior A Camogie. And they had, you know, obviously given up the, the game to play no, senior t- football. Care play se- no, Care play senior. They play senior. So, that was their second team. That was their second their team. Their second team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't know that she was in the mix at all, mm. at all, at all. So when I saw her today, um, first off, girl has confidence. Like, <laughs> wow. To go into that team, who, who are a very, very good group of Mogi players, and to look like you had been there before all of them is incredible. I, I don't think you'd disagree with me on that front. Like her runs today, her running off the shoulder... The way she looked up when she was giving ball into the corner, her possession, her support play, and she hits what three points in, in the first half. She went for the treble, treble. In basketball, they have a treble double. You got three, three points, three assists, and a three match suspension. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is it three matches? Uh, no, I don't know. That's how we messed up. Oh. Um, <laughs> it depends. Yeah. It all depends. Like it was very, it was hard to see the, the yeah. sending off because it's such so unusual to see a straight red card in Camogie. Um, I, I was delighted with it. And it was funny because I was kind of watching her because you Tip were had... Um, Tip I, was, had uh, I was delighted with it in the sense that it's nice to see that there's some fair play. Like if someone strikes someone else off the ball, they should be sent off. I'm like, she's a serious player and she'd be a huge loss for them. And I'm mm. like, I was so impressed by her performance. But I mean, that Ray Kelly was able to stand up today, give a red card, like instead of being like, oh, come on, girls. You know, here's a yellow card. Watch yourself, and you know, it's too many times. I've never found him too hard to come by and come over. To be honest, <laughs> 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 but, but it, was, it was an interesting. It was a strange one. That, like I suppose I was watching right. her because she got such a different dynamic to the game. Her runs, just you could see she was a footballer. Her running yeah. was just yeah. different to everyone else on the field. Right, DJ, I'd be delighted to hear that now. The football coach, she's very straight. Like she's very tall when she runs. But. Yeah. Tip had, a, tip had an indirect free um, well, between the 21 to 45 out on the right-hand side and caught was scanning the field and I was like, Maloney's going to go here. I just knew she, she just looked like she was going to do something different, a different kind of a run. And the next thing it just looked like, the Clare player had her by the jersey and she went just to kind of crack the hand away and, and kind of I suppose create that space between herself and the Clare player. It was very difficult to see whether she made much contact or not. The Clare player went down like she was in pain it didn't look like much, to be honest with you. It didn't look like, like a blatant attempt to strike with the hurl. Um, nobody saw it apart from the fourth official, which I've never seen before. The fourth official that came into the referee and told them, which I'm not even sure if you're allowed to that, but I don't know. But 
Oh, so anyway, straight red from Ray. So, geez, like, I don't know what the suspension is. It'd probably be a game. I think the, it depends what she's reported for and stuff. But, like, I was actually, it's you know, the way sometimes you just find these players and straight away, like, she's my favourite player. I was like, looking at her going, yes. can't wait to watch her for the rest of the rest of the championship. It was just phenomenal. The point she got was nearly, I thought it was from her own 60 fight. Like, it was, it was somewhere between a 60 fight and a 40 fight. It was unbelievable. I've never seen that in a match before. It was okay. fast. And if you Perfect. could pick out anyone who would do that, like in tip, you would say probably Kosh could do it or mm. someone. But to have two players on the one panel now that can do things like that, that's just, it's, it's unreal, like, you know. Mm. And then you had Orla Dwyer chipping in, you know, uh, in, in terms of her pace, like, she was like, I'll match you, I'll match you, Ashlyn, you know, it was like point for point. She was like, I'll go again, you'll go again, mm. I'll go again. They were, all of a sudden, they'd gone 10 points clear. Mm. And Claire were literally doing, they didn't know where to turn. It, it, yeah. Like obviously, we all ended up getting to watch it today. Um, me with one eye on the other match, obviously, but I genuinely was so impressed by the aptitude of the footballers playing Kamok. <laughs> yeah, caught the van was class as well. Her touch was unbelievable. But like yeah. probably a player you're talking about, dual players like the one who tends to go under the radar a small bit in in uh, tip. Uh, it was such a good time for Roshin Howard. Yeah. And like yeah. she laid on four points today and scored with herself as well. Like, like she accounted for five points for tip today. And it's just doing all that hard work around centre forward, winning the rucks, and she's an outrageous passer the ball. I don't think she's ever passed the ball conventionally in her whole life. She either flick mm-hmm. it over her shoulder or hand pass it back behind her back. And she's all the flicks and tricks, but she's the key to Tipperary. Like she is just keeps the whole thing ticking in that forward line, throwing the ball around. But geez, I thought Would she was very her- impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, I see her going directly today. So she's just she's, she's running in a direct line, and never before she's got Ashing Loney pelting here mm. in front of her. And I'm like, give it to Ash, and she's like, yeah, maybe I won't, maybe I will. And it's over the bar. But for Claire, they just didn't know who to go to, which, co- as you know, caused absolute havoc. So Ashing run alone terrifies the back line. That's the thing. Ashing is such a powerful, powerful runner, and once she gets going, you're not going to catch her no matter who you are, and to have her running on the shoulder with anyone, it's just going to yeah. make a defender think, if I go, it's just going to be popped over my head and there could yeah. be a goal chance. I'm just going to have to sit back and whoever's running just pops it over the bar. Yeah. But just going on about that, the red card, I know we kind of, we just had a quick talk about before, before, before the podcast, but for, okay, again, I know Ashton is unorthodox. She's a midfielder. I'm talking about a forward more than likely like Fiona, if you're if you're grabbing a Ford's jersey, what do you expect the Ford to do? How would you you have to protect yourself? And yeah. if you give one belt, you you're going to get them back. It's protect yourself so the, the defender knows not to hold on to me again. Um, and that side of things, if if Ashton was going to go for, go through for look for a pass from the free. A goal could have been on if the defender is holding me. You're going to pull down in your hand, get it, get off me, and you won't hold on to me again. Mm-hmm. So Ray really cared for that. It wasn't like she struck. When yeah. you say when you say a strike, there a strike is a strike. Yeah, she yeah. Just her hand off. No, it's just yeah. Her holding jersey. Yeah, I suppose like like I actually thought Ray refereed the game really well today. He blew for practically nothing. It really contributed to the to the flow of the game. Probably by the rules, he had no choice. But like it is a bugbear of mine, as you say. Look, have a look at the situation. You have a player who's scored three points, laid on three points, and is running the game, being marked by someone. Do you know who's the real, who's the instigator here? It's like, you know, I remember seeing Owen Murphy. I think or maybe I'm doing the service now. Keep the Kikini Owen Murphy getting sent off in a Fitzgibbon game. I think he had five points scored, and then he got sent off. And without ever even seeing the game, I can go. Right, well, I know what's happened here. Anyway, <laughs> he's absolutely cutting loose here. The cornerback is hitting the clip, and he's got caught retaliating. So. Like a lad who scored five points, or like Ashley Maloney, who's contributed six points to the game, isn't going to go out of her own way to instigate trouble when they're nine points up. You know, it's definitely the back is doing it. But look, it's just, it, it, I hope it's not a, a long suspension because it would be a crying shame if that was her sole contribution to the championship. Yeah, and don't don't get me wrong now, what I'm saying, like coming from, I'm a back, I'm a defender, I would hate to get that red card or whatever, like, you know. But what I'm saying is it's bringing it more and more towards hurling you know treating everyone the same I feel that sometimes um, like referees don't mean to be you know the way they are sometimes and they're like oh you know she's only a girl she didn't mean to do it do you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. what I like to see was like if there was a clear strike 
you know, he had to go by the rules. So, like, if there wasn't a clear strike, obviously he's made a major fuck up or whatever. Like, but as you said, it was like the fourth official who called it. Like, but you know, all I'm saying is up women's hurling. Do you know what I mean? That's what, that's yeah, yeah. going on. No, it's a fact. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a fact. Yeah. Look, and as it look, if a cornerback is going to be pulling and dragging and bollocksing, they have to expect to get a few clips back in return. And if that's where the game is going towards, then as you say, it will be all the better for it. Like, that's the, that's yeah. the way it should be. Um, I suppose we give you a bit of a dig out, uh, Sarah, because I suppose you weren't watching the full the full game here. But like for me, the, the, if I managed to do that, yeah, yeah, the four the four players. I think Dave, you were watching this as well. The four players that, that really stood out for me on the tip side were caught the van. Um, just everything she did in the first half she played like Patrick Horgan just her touch close to goal clipping over scores second half you know playing out around the wing looking for the ball just directing everything just top class like she, she should have got her second all-star last year she's absolutely shafted out of it she's in prime position today to Karen Kennedy at a savage game middle of the field herself and Maloney's an unbelievable partnership um, Orlo Dwyer I thought was really 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 impressive um, in the corner and then at half four for tip and Roisin Howard like just had made such a contribution to the game as well they were kind of the four that stood out for me was there anyone on the Clare side that stood out for you Davy? I suppose Eamor Kelly uh, she tried really hard uh, she got on, a, got on a lot of ball especially in the second half when she needed to like they were they, were, they weren't going well they were eight, nine, ten points down and Eamor kept showing for ball looking for ball looking to be on ball um, her finishing probably let her down. She probably could have got another two or three points, but she kept going right until the last minute. And I suppose, again, as you expect, she has to bring that back into into next week and go again or in two weeks' time. Okay, so before we move on and have a look at the upcoming games in the Senior Championship, a quick roundup of the other games in the Liberty Insurance Championship this week through the Intermediate Junior uh, competitions in the intermediate goal we got off to a serious start absolutely hammered Dublin uh, bad weekend for Dublin Kowoi Sarah I think they took trimmings in intermediate minor and under 16 so on the back of I suppose they would have been looking for a bit of positivity on the back of the managerial change and stuff like that it didn't come this weekend so not uh, not a great place to be uh, Claire had a very good win over the most famous junior team in the country the Offaly Juniors um, they got off to a very good start uh, this week. A cracking game by all accounts, high scoring encounter. Um, met Breed Mack today uh, in the rag, and she was tweeting about it yesterday as well that it was a, a really, really high level game. Um, and then over to our Nancy Murray ambassador, Sarah, you predicted this one as well, which is a bit off. Although I think I did say Kevin would probably win it because of Johnny, Johnny's brother. But, um, well, look, you're right. Uh, Kevin 311, Tyrone 5 points. Kevin, that's some score for a Kevin team to put up 3-11. So, you know, yeah. odds on that Kevin are going to pick up this cup and, you know, maybe we could sponsor it at some point or, or put the ribbons yeah. on it. Women's or... Hurl and Nancy Murray Cup has their ring to it. <laughs> or else we could make up a Junior C version of it. We'll see. Well, we'll, see. well look, I, I'm, 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 I'm all in for this, so I'm going to be following it closely for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so we have eight euros in our budget, so if that's higher than what Liberty Insurance are paying, we're quids in. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so on to next week, I suppose. Um, Fiona and Davy, I suppose we'll go to you with this one first. We'll start with you, Fiona. Kikini versus Westmead. As we said there at the start of the show, it's just incredible to think that four years after getting absolutely pumped by Kikini's second team, that Westmead go to Nolan Park with two points in the bag in the senior championship with a real chance of getting to the quarterfinal. I suppose the question is, Fiona, based on what you've seen at Westmead, do they have a chance next weekend? Um, I think I, I remember our first trip down to Nolan Park. What a class time that was for us and what a great time it will be for Westmead. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think they'll have enough like to really come within. I, I, I'd, push, I'd put 10 points to handicap there. Like, you know, I don't think they'll come um, anywhere near them, but God, they'll have... They'll have a great time down there. They'll definitely put together some really good like passing, and they'll there'll be a good few scores picked up by them, I've no doubt. But I just think the experience and the kill can he have the hunger can Kenny have, like I just I'd say there'd be no um coming close to them really. But um I didn't mention earlier actually their their keeper had an unbelievable game, Fiona Keating. I should have she's she's on my all-star nomination list, like 
Yeah, please, thank you. She's um, she, she was unlucky not to get three points, not to finish up with three points. She's so <laughs> strike of a ball. She took a free from, I'd say, between the 45, her own 45 and 65, put it over. Unlucky one or two others. And she made a great save. Uh, um, I did allude to Judith's piercing run through the middle and Judith struck it very well. Like, it's a bad sign when the halfback is trying to score the goals for them. But, like, she made a great save, like, her reaction. She had two really good reactive saves and, like, one real positive from the game in general. Laura had another one or two good saves. And, and there was no, as I like to call them, camogie goals scored in that game. So, like, your high dropping in ball. Oh, look, it's in the back of the net. And then it's shown on RTE News. And it's like, ah, look, it's camogie. You know? So, like, yeah. it was really good to not see any of those goals scored yesterday in that game anyway so um yeah no Westmead will definitely as I said they'll kick up they'll keep the scoreboard ticking over but I just think um Kilkenny will have too much experience and too much firepower for them yeah I remember during 2015 about two weeks out from the championship we went down to James Stevens one Sunday night to play him in a challenge match and we were dressed up and we yeah. played out of our skins like we played unbelievably well and we they scored 424 against us and it was just yeah it was a real welcome to senior moment so that could be really what's well. waiting Westmead yeah. down the tracks here uh, next weekend as well well, Dave, you haven't seen Kilkenny last weekend. Like, they've a competitive game under their best now. Do you foresee any changes to the Kilkenny lineup based on what you saw at the weekend? Yeah, I suppose calling a space fade, Kilkenny are going to win and probably win comfortably, as Fiona said. But yeah, there, there will be changes. The, the first game after seven months out, having no inter county game, there is going to be cobwebs. It's how they kind of progress from here on. Again, they can nearly take a foot off the pedal train hard for the next couple of weeks and aim for a semi-final spot because again they have Limerick after after um, Westmead but there will be a couple of changes try a few, few new players out try and get the system going again they're going to play to a similar system you'd have to expect um, but just interesting the kind of last last score of the game came in the 35th minute in the second half and it's what I suppose Brian Dowling and Tommy Shefflin want Kilkenny to do they were Packed numbers inside their own 45. Watford had the ball. Dispossessed them. Popped a nice hand pass out. Um, I think it was to, to Megan Farrell. Diagonal ball to the corner forward. She turned her man. And Danielle Morrissey, the soap who came on, was tanking down the middle. Pop pass to Danielle. And again, she could have went for goal. She took, took the score. But it's exactly what uh, the two boys want the Kilkenny team to play. So again, you'd expect a lot more of that kind of coming into, into the weekend. But again, Kilkenny to, to win comfortably. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's interesting when you just, when you say it out loud there, their next two games are against Westmead and Limerick and then a semi-final. Like I know Galway have been caught in the past when they've qualified directly for a semi-final. Is the same fate awaiting Kilkenny? They're like, I suppose they had a relatively comfortable game for 30 minutes on Saturday. Probably have two handy ones coming down the line. Are they going to be that little bit undercooked in a semi final against whoever comes in? Could be the danger for them, and there's no one to play against in challenge matches or anything like that, is there? So it's just going to be, it's, it'll depend how they manage it, I suppose. They have a strong squad, 15 on 15 games, keep the intensity uh-huh. up their training. But uh, they yeah. could, they, like, you wouldn't know they could even do a, a 16 or 17 v 15, bring a few more in, just get more pressure on the, the starting 15. But as you said, like training is going to be hectic, you'd imagine, um, and really, really tough, dogged training, working hard on, on a bit of tactics with a bit of fitness because, um, as you said, they're, they're, they will be a good couple of weeks away from a really competitive game, and that, that is the danger going into an All-Ireland semi-final with a really no competitive game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's it, 100%. Um, I suppose uh, Dublin against Tip, Sarah, obviously you saw a little bit of Tipperary today. Uh, you know Dublin inside out. What are we to expect from this one? I watched Dublin and Westmead uh, snippets of the challenge match that they played uh, last week. Based on that, based on how little Dublin know, the Dublin management knows about their players, um, I'd be concerned that they could see themselves in the same position as Clare, um, in that they could be down early on, then they'll kind of find a purple patch for, for a brief period, but I, but I can't see any other result than Tip winning this one comfortably. And I can see Tip getting goals, proper goals, because I think they'll have more space. I think the rag is so tight. You don't necessarily get to the same space as you would at, say, Belfield today. If you looked at uh, Wexford and Galway today, there was so much space. So give Tip a bit of space, and, and they're going to, going to use it. And, and Dublin won't be prepared for it, because I just don't think 
they have had enough time in the last three weeks to cement down a back six. Like, experience of the Galway back six versus the experience of the Dublin back six. There's no, there's no contest. Yeah, very difficult to prepare. Very difficult to come in against the team who've had a competitive game, first yeah. of all. Then, obviously, they had their break because of the COVID scare. And then, obviously, they had a management change. So, probably the worst possible preparation for Dublin. It was really interesting. I suppose we have to wait and see whether Ashley Maloney will play or not mm. next day. Um, but it was but interesting. It'd be a blessing for Dublin if she doesn't, Lord. Possibly, but another interesting thing is, is Tip had a bench that they haven't had for years. Mm. Um, like they brought on Kareem Blair, who was very effective for UCC in the Ashburn. Um, brought on Keir De Maher, who had a starter full forward for UL last year in the Ashburn. Brought on Miriam Campion, who's been a starter for Tipperary for a few years. Um, and they all made an impact in the game. Do you know, like Tipper definitely building a squad. Not only be a big loss to him, but not a not a such a loss that I think that they wouldn't be able to beat Dublin at all. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I know you all went with your own last week, but uh, I won't be able to go with Dublin this week. I just don't have the form. experience. I have to keep my hundred percent record. <laughs> we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Throwing people under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose Watford versus Limerick, Fiona um, has taken on the winner takes all mantle here. Now, whoever loses is out. Uh, I suppose That's in previous true. years, whoever lost was heading for the heading for the relegation uh, final, but not this year. Um, can Limerick pick themselves up? I mean, there's been so much negativity around the result, so much distraction on social media, and just ill feeling and toxicity. Like, how do Limerick pick themselves up this week? Um, and will they be able to put in a performance next Saturday against Wolf? Um. I genuinely don't know how they're going to pick themselves back up now. I, I just, I, as you said, there's so much unrest. Um, you know, as you said, there's so much going on there and social media and stuff. And then to have a performance like they did. And as I said, like, you know, there was some very good individual performances from girls, but like on a whole, they're a weakened, they're a weakened side. And unfortunately, like, I'd say flat out, no, I can't see anything changing for them against Waterford next weekend. Waterford got a fine clip and really at the end of the day against Kilkenny, even though they put on a good, very good performance and Waterford would be, you know, uh, the, gulf, the gulf is widening, you know, um, unfortunately for Nimerick and Nimerick are on the, on, the, on the wrong side of that gulf now um, this year anyway. So hopefully like they can turn things around at some stage, but I can't see it happening next weekend, no. Yeah, I suppose Watford, like, I suppose they'll be disappointed with their performance at the weekend. Um, but Fergal is an experienced guy. Um, and at the end of the day, they still have Shona Curran, Eve Rocket, Beth Cart, Nanny Fitzgerald, Abby Flynn. Like, they, have the, they have the raw materials there to put in a performance, whereas maybe they worry that, uh, that Limerick maybe don't have that experience to change things up a little bit or to drive it on. David, did you see enough in Watford to suggest that they would have too much for Limerick? Yeah, I actually, I actually think they'll they'll win quite comfortably as, again, and I think they'll score goals. Um, as I said, that they had a couple of half chances, especially in the first half, the last day, that they didn't take. And I can imagine in trend during the week that goals will be on their mind when they get that half chance. They're going to finish them, and I expect three or four goals the weekend from from them. Yeah, and that's from that's from a range of different scores as well. Like, yeah. had been inside and full forward, any as well. Um, they're they're two. I, I, I'd be putting money on them to get a goal each anyways. Um, no, definitely. They're very, very, very dangerous. Um, I think Abby will benefit from... She hasn't played a whole pile at that level. Very young player. Um, she's lethal with De La Salle. I can't see Beth Carton having... Like, I've never... Not that I can't see her. I've never seen her put two bad games back-to-back. Um, so I would expect a bit of a, a Beth backlash. Uh, on Sunday. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag, best backlash. Actually, in a poly, at the Irish Independent. I think, <laughs> I think David said a very important line there, and it was a range of scorers. And like, I think over all the teams at the weekend, um, aside from unfortunately, probably Limerick um, and Clare today. There was a range of scorers, you know, and um, that's so important at a senior level. And you know, I think that that would be the big difference for Waterford next again, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, before we have a quick look at the, the intermediate and the and the junior games, let's uh, have a whip around the group so and get our predictions for uh, for next week in the senior. So, Dave, I'm going to get your three off you first, okay? No problem. Um, so we'll go Kilkenny Westmead. Kilkenny. Dublin tip. Tip. And Waterford Limerick. Waterford. All on the handicap yeah. as well. All on the handicap. 
<laughs> right, see, we'll go to you. Give us your three. And do you want to go Cork and Wexford, no? It's Cork and Wexford, that next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I go Cork as well. <laughs> well, we should probably talk about that game, so I suppose. <laughs> we did not, have, I did not see that on the fixtures at all. <laughs> Oh man, I, I literally, I'm good for one proper mistake every single episode. It's, uh, it's like, it's, it's, it's consistency anyway. Um, Cork and Wexford next weekend. Sarah, I suppose you have more of an insight into the Cork camp maybe than the rest of us. Um, what can we expect from them? Do you know what? I actually, basing it, if we're basing it off the county championship and the fact that Corsi's were beaten, having come out of, Cork and had done so well in Cork and then were obviously beaten by Clare quite well. I don't actually know how well Cork are going to do in, in this championship now because mm. I don't know what the standard of the championship was by comparison to the other championship. Well, and t- uh, three days ago, three days ago, <laughs> you I couldn't know. see him not winning the Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but I think, I think I was driving up the road and I kind of had a bit of a panic attack to be honest and said oh my god you've based this on absolutely nothing <laughs> so. yeah no you look I get your point about the club championship but we, we've discussed this on the podcast before and the hurling is the same now, Cork is such a big county that there's no dominant club there's only one one or two from every club going into the county panel you know, it's not like Ina would have seven Clare or, okay. or yeah. Khalidi would have one with Limerick or <laughs> I don't know um, but like, there's a there's a spread of players across the across the county. So, I, like, Cork I have struggled. Apart from Milford, Milford are the only Cork club that have ever come out of Cork really in the last ten years and really made a crack off yes. of the provincial in Northern Ireland. So, I wouldn't really. And they didn't just make a crack; they dominated it. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're, the the they're the only they're ones. They're the only ones. In Inniscarra have never in Iscara have failed to do it. You know, yeah. and well, you know what? I, poor last year, of course, you were hammered this year. So I wouldn't I, read too much into it. I don't think Paulie's too bothered either. I, th- I think what, I, what I'm thinking is if Kilkenny's, if Kilkenny are a bit old in the legs and, and they don't necessarily have the same explosiveness that they had in previous years, and I'm looking at Galway today and saw what they had in, in their team, I'm trying to think, do Cork have the ability to match up in every position on the field? Because they might mm-hmm. have seven or eight positions that they're going to be really strong in. But I don't know, did they have the full 15? Whereas I thought, based on today's performance, Galway had 15 and four more, you know? Mm. So that's probably where my sense of panic has come in. I think we went too early, lads. But... Mm, uh, like Cork, Cork have a serious set of forwards as well. Like, Orla Cronin is arguably the best centre forward in the country. You know, like, Chloe Sigerson, absolutely superb in the middle of the field. Amy O'Connor, Katrina Mackey, Linda Collins. Will Fiona Keating play? Like, she's the, she's the up-and-coming star in Cork. Like, Cork have plenty of players as well. Um, but they, yeah. but they can be marked. They can be marked. I don't think. I don't think there's a there's a best carton in Cork. Mm. You know, like I, I just think, I just think that Cork possibly slightly a little old, and I, and I, and I am. I was panicking because up the road going, geez, <laughs> what do you face this on? But when looking at Wexford, I actually think Wexford will benefit. Party got you, didn't he? Party got you. It's a party's glow <laughs> trying to create this smoke screen that. <laughs> <laughs> that his players are about to go on strike and that no. Cork are up in a heap, whereas the reality is they're training like demons. And he's like, yeah, Sarah, that's... here, fucking <laughs> dial it in a small bit here on the predictions. And all of a sudden, one show later, <laughs> Cork are finished. They're old, like, they're yeah. done, they're gone. <laughs> but look. Look. They're, they're finished. I don't know. Gone. Look. Maybe I just, maybe I was actually, as well, Wexford today, I, I genuinely love the cut of their jib, we'll say, because they yeah. just, they just threw themselves at Galway today and actually I think they'll have really benefited from today and got great confidence from it and I think they're going to give Cork a good run next week. Mm-hmm. Cork will actually find it a little tough against Wexford next week simply for the fact that Wexford is so physical. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think they're going to have it all their own way early on. Yeah, In- yeah. interesting, of course, Kevin Tatton, the Wexford manager, uh, is involved with Davies, uh, Davies' new club, Cork City, as well, so there's that connection there as well. So. <laughs> Um, is so there right. a venue? Sorry, is there a venue for that game? <laughs> I want to do it. No, I asked you. I asked you. The game was on. Like, so <laughs> no, there is a venue for it, David. There, <laughs> there will. It will be played on a pitch, David. It will be played on a pitch. Um, <laughs> no, I'll, I'll text you later. We'll. We'll. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. No, look. I, it, it's going that. to be Cork. It's going to be Cork. You know. Uh, I, I know it's going to be Cork. 
but I just feel like Wexford are going to actually be much more competitive than I had anticipated them to be based mm-hmm. on today. Okay. Um, right, so Davey, Cork, Wexford, your final Cork. prediction? Cork. Cork. Okay, Fiona, we'll go to you for your four. Same as Take Davey. It. Yeah, very same. Sarah? Davey on the, on, the, on the head. There you go. Yeah. Comprehensive. So, uh, the other games next week, the Intermediate Championship really kicks off in earnest. Um, you have Leash against Kildare and Cork against Kerry. And I suppose a real interesting fixture, and it'll be one of these, I suppose, Sarah, that we'll know more about once, it, once it's been played, is Derry against Down. Um, I know Down have been preparing really, really well. Uh, I think Neve Mallon is right up there with the best players in the country. Um, Derry, potentially, if their county final is anything to go by, we were watching that Davy Swatra and Slat Neil. Really, really high standard. There's some phenomenal players in Derry. I suppose over the last few years, they've struggled to get them to commit to county. Um, but if they've got a squad together the last five or six weeks, they have they have the potential to go and go and win that. So that'll be a really interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, in the junior, uh, with Wexford against Clare. Clare looking to get a second win on the board. Armagh against Roscommon. Um, and Watford against last year's finalist Limerick. And Sarah, in the, in the Nancy Murray, it's round two. Loud against Tyrone. So I know you have a bit of a connection to Tyrone there. So um, I presume, presume you'll be going with those. But... Um, I'll go with Tyrone, yes, on this occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, so that's it, Marriage will never go ahead. Yeah. That's it. Um, fair play to you between you. you. Got every game watched this week. We have a fair list of players. Stuck your hand up for the All Stars. I suppose if the week is anything to go by, it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, there's plenty happening on and off the field. So, again, once again, thanks to our sponsors, Burke Sports. It's burksports.ie. Uh, or talk to Norma Clancy in the office, norma.clancy burksports.ie. Um, for all your gear needs and if you're watching on YouTube like, subscribe whatever leave a comment or a badge